Hi, Bill Vales here for another edition of Littleton Rocks. And for this show, I have my guest, Anita Honkinen. Anita. Thanks thank, for inviting me, Bill. Thank, thanks for coming. I've been um, trying to get you here for years, <laughs> right? You have. Right. And uh, uh, here we are today. Uh, as promised, this is going to be a somewhat unstructured uh, affair. We're going to try to take the audience through um, a little bit about uh, rocks, a little bit about mineral collection, and um, any other topic, jewelry making, things. See where it goes. Thing, things yeah. like that. So, Anita, what's your background? So, I graduated from Bridgewater State, mm -hmm. uh, major in um, earth sciences, mm -hmm. and a concentration in geology, and I went into teaching because I always wanted to teach. Yep. Um, and I taught up in New Hampshire and Milford for half a dozen years okay. and then the rest of my career I was at Lincoln Sudbury Regional High School in Sudbury. Okay. Um, taught ninth grade earth science uh, which all the students there are required to take mm -hmm. um, and some electives geology astronomy um, so forth and I retired from there five years ago. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah great. Yeah, so that was like <laughs> yeah. 36 years yeah. of teaching. Now um, you won an award right? I won a couple of awards. I yeah. was um, New England uh, Earth Science Teacher of the Year, yeah. and um, they, I was also honored, very honored, to be inducted into the Massachusetts Science Teacher Hall of Fame yeah. um, wow. in 2008, that... yeah, which most people are like, there's such a thing, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but there is, and yeah. it, was a, it was a nice yeah. honor. Yeah. Um, Great. Uh, I know we, we met at the Neshoba Valley Mineralogical uh, Society, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we, uh, you know, like interests. Mm -hmm. you know, right. um, rocks and minerals. Um, so uh, we want to get the audience, um, we want to entice the audience yeah. into uh, looking around, seeing yeah. what's out there for rocks right. and minerals and trying to yeah. understand what the differences right. are between them. How would you describe a rock? <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's a reason why in, in college you take mineralogy before you do petrology, which is the study of rocks. It's because minerals are much more straightforward. Um, I don't want to say they're simple, yeah. but it's pretty specific. Rocks, there's no real good definition of rock mm -hmm. um, because there's such a wide variety. It's naturally occurring. Um, it's solid, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, it's the building block of our crust, or, mm -hmm. you know, but um, it's not as easy to define as, say, a piece of quartz, which is silicon dioxide. You know, granite, for example, I see you have a number of pieces of granite there. We have a, There's one piece. There's one piece. These are other pieces. Yeah. I mean, granite, as we can see from this, comes in all different varieties. The one thing we see on this is they're all kind of light colors. Mm -hmm. um, so for those of people at home that have granite countertops, yes, yes. and it's not light colored, it's not really granite. You know, it's kind of granitoid, like granite. It's yeah. crystals, forms deep in the earth. Yeah. But it's technically, according to a geologist, not not granite. Not granite. Right? Like I, when I showed you this this morning, mm. you know that, and that was a slab. Yeah, <laughs> cut, cut and polished, and it's really nice. I mean, when you look at this, it's a lovely piece of stone, and this is something people might have sold or, yeah. or purchased as, as granite, granite. But it's yeah. actually we, it looks like labradorite. Yeah, to me. La lab yeah. labradorite, which is a, a form of feldspar. Right. Right. Okay, which is yep. a component of granite. Yes, all of this white stuff in here is is Felds feldspar. Uh, feldspar. Right? And feldspars can come in darker colors. Yeah. Um, but you know that's that's a little yeah. bit darker one. You know, yeah. but it's similar. I don't know if we can see the back of this. Yeah. Um, 
when we look at the back of this, it, it's, this is nice. It's got a really old label that someone is, unfortunately, yes. it's hard to read. Um, but there are large crystals in this. This is what, this is what the blotchiness is. And mm -hmm. that's what you see in any granite is a number of different kinds of crystals. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it tells a story. And when I was teaching, that's one of the things when we were dealing with rocks, um, is they tell a story about the earth, right? How did they form? You know, mm -hmm. as soon as you see any of these, you know these form from molten rock, magma, mm -hmm. deep in the earth, mm -hmm. five miles, 10 miles down, yep. and then slowly cooled over time mm -hmm. um, to get those nice big crystals. You know? yeah. so, like, like uh, uh, some of these, these are local. Um, yeah. In fact, this, uh, I believe, you know, I know where I get these things right when I get them. <laughs> and, and I say, I'm going to remember yes. where they are. Yes. And then I forget. Yes. This is either Kinsman granite, mm -hmm. which is found in Franconia Notch, mm -hmm. or, or it could be from Acadia, um, which has a lot of pinks right. in, 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 exactly. in their granite mm -hmm. uh, up there. But this is um, granite. And I know walking around Boston, we were in Boston this weekend, we see this yeah. in its polished form yes. um, along Newbury Street and uh, right. other places that really right. invest in their architecture. Well, of course, the Chelmsford granite is famous, um, or it used to be. Um, used to be shipped by canal down to Boston and other places. And there are buildings in Boston, New York, that you know, are, are made with Chelmsford granite. Quincy is another area. Yep. Um, Milford, Mass. They all have different kinds of granites. And it's amazing how different they can be. Yes. You know, we think of this as a small area, but you don't have to go far, and they can be different. Yeah. yeah. Slightly different chemistry. Yeah. You know? I read something about Chelmsford granite that um, it was used for a lot of curbstones. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons it was used for curbstone, it, is, it, it had uh, small flecks of mica in it, which resulted in uh, reflection. Oh, really? Yeah. On automobile lights. I, yeah, I could, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so these, um, uh, where you said are, um, these were formed deep in the earth, mm -hmm. maybe five, 10 miles yeah. down. Uh, these would be called igneous rocks. Yes, okay. plutonic. Yeah, Pl plutonic, plutonic igneous. So right. they're, they're in they're in a molten state. Yeah, originally. Yeah, you know, and then they cool. Mm -hmm. You know, when the source of heat mm -hmm. uh, subsides, yep. um, and and that cooling can take millions of years yes. in some depending cases, depending on the depth. Yeah. Depending on the depth and the yeah. pressures and I things think, like that. You know, more people are familiar with like lava. Last year, where we saw the Hawaiian volcanoes erupting, yes. um, I mean that's similar to yeah. the source material for these, yes. except for it cools really fast. Yeah. You know, in some, you know, if it goes into the water, it cools like this, and you get a nice glass. Right. Um, right. Obsidian, right? Yeah. Um, Did I bring my obsidian? No, Probably I, not. I actually have some in the yeah. jewelry form, yeah. but um, yeah, but you know. That cools relatively quickly. Yeah. Um, now, now that would be considered an extrusive. Extrusive, yes. Because it's volcanic or extrusive. Yeah, we mentioned the term plutonic. That can also be called intrusive because it solidifies in the earth. Yeah, in the um, earth. An and extrusive. extrusive would be out, out of, of yeah. the earth. Um, and believe it or not, we actually have some volcanic rocks around here, but they're millions and millions of years ago, like Blue Hill down in Milton yes. is actually the kind of the core of an old volcano. Yeah, um, or Ossipee. Yes, Ossipee, yes. O Ossipee, yeah, yeah, New, New Hampshire. Hampshire. Um, yeah. So we do have some really old volcanic rocks. And again, if you read the clues and you see those, you know, oh, that, that tells me something about the history of this area. Yeah. 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 Okay, interesting. So this is igneous rock mm -hmm. and um, these were actually um, intrusive igneous rocks, mm -hmm, right. okay? And, and you see these are all somewhat homogenous yes. in, 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 yeah. the way, in the way they look. Mm -hmm. But now let's go to another rock. Let's go to sedimentary rock. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So 
How would you define describe what a sedimentary sedimentary rocks sedimentary. can? Yeah. Um, Again, not the easiest definition because you think the name tells you it's sediments. Yeah. But then, what are sediments? Yeah. And you have sand, you have mud, you have pebbles, um, those types of things. And then, of course, you stick up a piece that is neither, <laughs> and not any of those. It's not sand. It's not gravel. It's not pebbles. And here we have an organic rock, right? Um, it's made of shells. This is from yeah. Florida. Uh, it is. Yeah, it's coquina. Yeah. 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 So people that have what been did down. You call it? Coquina? Coquina. Okay. Um, people that have been down to Florida, um, the Cape Canaveral area. Not that I've been there, but I believe in St. Augustine, the old fort there. Okay. This is what makes up the wall of the fort. Oh. Because um, it's the local rock. They're not going to lug stuff, right? Sure. And what I've read is actually it was pretty good when cannonballs hit it because it tends to kind of break apart and it absorbs the energy I see. of the cannonball rather than transport you know, the energy through the whole rock. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, sort yeah. of like helmets, you know, yeah. deforming. Um, but so, yeah, so sedimentary rock can be a number of things as long as they're quote unquote cemented together. Those okay. pieces hold together. And, and, and these are, you can see all these former living mm, yep. creatures yes. here that were uh, cemented together. And this cementation is really part of what they call the lithification. Yes. That, that to it's make being, rock. It, yeah. it, it, making lith. rock. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, lith. Lith stone. Yeah. Lith is stone. Yeah. 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 Um, so for artists, they might, you know, the term lithograph is, which is literally using the stone, well, they, yeah. you know, That's etch true. into the stone and use that to print. So. Um, but one of the things we know about all sedimentary rocks, this is really a good indication of this because it's living things, is that sedimentary rocks form on the Earth's surface, unlike the igneous, you know, plutonic igneous things we were just looking at, which are definitely deep down. This definitely has to form on the surface because that's where the things are living. Yep. That's where the sand is being made. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this was from... Florida. Now, I think so. Now, now, this one here, this is also a sedimentary yeah. rock. Yep, it is. It is. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, now, can they see the fossils on this? Yeah, like this. Okay. Yeah, you can point yeah. some of them out up front there. Let's see. There's some here. Yeah, some really nice ones there. Some nice shells yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Doing everything backwards. Yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, that's why I'm letting some, you point. <laughs> some more shells. Yeah. Yeah, up yeah. here. Up here is a really nice one you can see. Yeah, right here. Yeah. And the one thing you can notice on this, mm -hmm. can you put the uh, coquina back up yep. next to it, is that these shells, some of them are whole, but if you notice, most of these are broken up. Yeah, these you know? are fragments. Um, mm -hmm. And so if you think about where do shells get broken up, you think right along the beach, where yep. the waves are breaking it up. Sure, so tidal the story action. this rock is telling me, this is formed in an area where there's a lot of wave action, tidal, you know, going back into this. The shells look pretty whole in here. Good point. So this is, um, this is probably formed from a little farther out, mm -hmm. I'm sure maybe deeper down so that when the things died and sank to the bottom, they mm -hmm. just stayed there. They didn't get annihilated. Yeah. Um, what kind of rock uh, matrix would you say? It's like, like a muddy, you know, like shale a mud, type mud thing, stone, a mudstone shale, shale, shale type thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, do you know where that's from? This is from New York. Oh, this, this good, is, I ask you. Oh, that's that tag. This yeah. is from uh, North Brookfield, New York. Yeah, which, it's, if you think about it, what it tells you, I don't know, where is North Brookfield? Do you have any idea? Um, I don't. But what the, I mean, we know what New York is now, yes. all right? New York is not the bottom of a shallow ocean right. anymore, right? right. Um, so that immediately tells us things have changed in New York over time. Yes. Um, that we've gone from a peaceful ocean floor to mountains and yep. you know hills, and it's a much different environment. Very interesting. Yeah. Now you've. Uh, it's good the contrast you made between it, these. Yeah, well, that's a two. you pick two great samples. Yeah. Um, you know, recent 
current things, yeah. um, relatively, you know, with only a few thousand maybe years old, tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. And that's probably what a good hundred and fifty million. Yeah, you know, I, I, at least. I, I, even back to the Ordovician. Right, right. You know, yeah, going uh, way back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that uh, gives a little sense of um, igneous rock with the granite, yep. sedimentary rock um, with the uh, marine slabs, yeah. and now we have metamorphic, metamorphic. rock. Metamorphic. Yeah. So how would you describe metamorphic rock? Well, metamorphic rocks that have changed. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to have some kind of source material, mm -hmm. granite, the, the shales, anything sedimentary, um, and it's basically been deformed by heat and or pressure. Um, so basically you're taking things and cooking them or squishing them or both. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually a rock that's really common around here. Um, it is. These yes. were from Boxboro. Oh, you can't get much more common than that, local it, it, right. than that, right? The, these were actually, um, uh, I was hunting for some Neshoba terrain, mm -hmm. which is a larger uh, area of rock type right. or right. Uh, uh, categorization. Um, and a great exposure of Neshoba terrain is over at the intersection of Route 111 and 495. Mm -hmm. There's some beautiful right. pictures. And uh, this is nice. And we always have to say it's a nice piece of nice. Yes, it's G-N-E-I-S-S, -S, right. yes. Right. But you can see in here the, um, uh, the layering. Yeah. Right. The layering. And, and uh, how, how, how is that occurring, that layering? So when you look at this, what strikes me is that it, you can see layering but unlike when you look at a sedimentary rock where you typically have really defined layers, yeah. um, these tend to be a little bit less consistent. Mm -hmm. They may, Peter, you can see this nice, whoa, where am I? This rock, yeah. Mm -hmm. The white crystal, this white oh, band, yes. yeah. it's mm -hmm. there, it expands, yeah. and then it peters out. Yes. Right? But they're definitely shiny mm -hmm. little crystals. Um, so in some ways it looks sedimentary characteristics in some ways are like igneous characteristics that you get the little crystals in yep. there, right? So you've taken sediments probably here mm -hmm. um, and they've been forced. Have you talked about plate tectonics in your shows before? Well, we have, but we're going to talk about it again. <laughs> but, but I knew we needed a way to get into, into plate, plate tectonics. tectonics right? So go ahead and start and so talking about it. This, this area has been really changed over time, mm -hmm. multiple times over hundreds of millions of years of the Earth's crust, pieces of the crust, the plates coming mm -hmm. together, squishing, yep. forcing things together, coming apart, coming back together again. And each time you have those collisions, there's a tremendous amount of heat and pressure developed. Yep. And any time you squish things together, whether it's in a car accident mm -hmm. or you know, whatever you're doing, things are going to be forced up, things are going to be forced down, yep. right? And you build up heat and pressure, particularly when things are forced down. Okay. And things get cooked. So if you start with layers of sand, gravel, whatever, right, mud. Yeah, so you perhaps push them down, these started right? yeah. as sedimentary, sedimentary rock. rock. Right, and then it and got And the continents down. started pushing yeah. together. And I mean, if you look at it, ultimately, it started as loose sediments mm -hmm. that were cemented together mm -hmm. to form the rock, squished together, pushed down, subjected to heat and pressure. And what that does, it, it literally cooks it. So just like taking cake batter, mm -hmm throw it into the oven and you come out with something that looks different than mm -hmm. the cake batter, yes. right? um, structurally, you know, um, similar, co same composition, it's all the same stuff, you, don't, yeah, you yeah. know, um, same elements, right? But it's changed and that's what we've had here that, that those sediments were changed to sedimentary rock and then cooked, compressed and changed to this. Yeah. And if it was, can, you know, more heat and pressure added to it, it would have been altered farther into a different kind of rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's an important point that that there is a, a, a gradation that yeah. occurs on mm -hmm. based on depth, uh, pressure, and yep. heat. Right. That with a little bit of pressure and heat, you're you're going to get one type of rock. 
with a lot of pressure and heat, you're going to get a different else. type. Right. This tends to be at the end mm -hmm. of, of the pressure and heat, right. I think, the, yep. uh, the nice. And, I, and uh, in this um, layering, I, I've also learned that when this is being cooked, like minerals will tend to yeah. Yeah. hang out together. Right, they do. You know. So you get this like banding. Yeah. Um, I tended to, when I was teaching, tended to avoid using the term layering because mm -hmm. with students yeah. in particular, then they start thinking sedimentary. Sediment. Yep. You say banding, it definitely is. Like you get banding. this, you know, a layer of dark minerals, a layer of light minerals. You may hit a zone of garnets running through it, mm -hmm. you know, um, or pyrite, but they tend to be zoned out. Um, and again, that's when you're heating it up, different elements start to recombine to make different types of minerals. Um, just looking at what I have in front of me, where did that nice piece of, um, we both collected in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, this is also a piece of schist, looks very different than what we had up here. Mm -hmm. um, but this area is famous for its garnets, right? Um, and here we have some really lovely cubes. Yeah. Whoops, this way, yeah, of garnet, mm -hmm. right? Which weren't in the sedimentary, the sediments to start with. Right. They weren't in the sedimentary rock to start with. Um, but as that rock got pushed down um, and heated up, yeah. the elements in the, in the rock recombined to start forming these really lovely garnet crystals. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Which I Beautiful. think you had another piece here. Well, I do, it's, but uh, to yeah. show something yeah. along the... Uh, Unfortunately, I had this big. Yeah, I'll let me move this out of the way. But for I, you. but I had to, I had to bring this. <laughs> you did. It's uh, to it's show, impressive. to show the, mm -hmm. uh, the banding. Okay. 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 This is a piece. This comes from Littleton. Yeah. This is a piece of uh, Tadmuck Brook schist. Yeah, it's a great name. <laughs> it is. Which I presume is from the Tadmuck mm -hmm. Brook in Westford. Well, let's, we, you've thrown out a few names already, and most yeah. rocks, geologists assign names to a rock, usually based on either a really good exposure or where it was first found, yeah. right? So this was identified by some geologists probably, you know, 100 or more years ago yeah. in this area, um, and they assigned Tadmuck Brook to it because Tadmuck Brook runs... Yep. Right through there. Yeah. So, so this um, was not at s as much depth or mm -hmm. pressure as right. that. Right. Okay. Yep. The nice was deeper, right. hotter. This was not as deep, not as hot. So it, it um, has different characteristics. Yep. So in this banding, um, which I'm going to call it here on in, as yeah, opposed to layering. No, that's but fine. but, I mean, you, cause but you can it's, clearly yeah. see the yeah. the banding. Right. And matter of fact, when you use, you're saying that, I mean, you run it. If you really get into the geology, geologists sometimes use a term like meta sedimentary, yes. meaning like it's kind of borderline. It's yeah. sedimentary, but slightly cooked. So, um, but this is definitely sedimentary. Yeah. I mean. Um, Excuse me. Metamorphic. Metamorphic. Yeah. Um, so, and you can tell from the shine. Yeah, the yeah. shine has almost a um, phyllite. Yep. Is, mm -hmm. is the term that uh, yep. used for this. So, so you could peel this apart with right. a little bit of effort. Right. Um, this way. Yep. You'd have a much harder time right. going that way. Right. And that fact, that if you turn it around. You can see right through here where it would be really easy to be picking off yeah. these layers. If you had a nice little chisel, you could go chum, 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 yeah. 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 But you see some of the folding here. Yeah. And um, um, this is, um, was right along Oak Hill Road uh, next to, um, next to uh, Oak Hill. And that's known mm -hmm. for the Tad McBrook right. schist where there's a, uh, actually points of contact between the Neshoba terrain yeah. And the Tad McBrook yep. schist. Yeah. Okay. So so there we are. Metamorphic rocks. Yeah. Igneous rocks and some sedimentary. Can you rocks. do that? Oh boy. <laughs> I'm 
That's, okay. a, that's one of the benefits of liking geology is that you get your exercise in. You do. Going out and collecting things and you do. hefting them around, yeah. Um, now, we see in a lot of rocks this shiny little stuff, and it always mm -hmm. amazes kids, I think. Yep. Um, you know, little flakes. Right. Little flakes of mica. Um, do you have any? Well, you got some there. I mean, big stuff. Yeah. Mica just isn't in little flakes. Right. I mean, mica is a really common mineral to find. Um, whether it's in granite or even the metamorphic rocks, you don't tend to find it in sedimentary, really. Um, but, you know, whether it's little tiny pieces or big, what, what are called books. Can you put that white one up oh, there, too? Oh, this yeah. is a great one. Um, you, this this is from this. the Alstead area of New Hampshire, right? Um, and nice pieces of, I shouldn't say nice pieces, because we've already talked about nice. Well, it's NICE. Yeah, NICE. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pieces of mica, people are used to finding little tiny flakes of it as we see on the table here yeah. already. Yeah. Um, this is referred to as a book of mica, yeah. right? Um, and you have the pages because, there. Because, yeah, it looks like pages in a pages. book, right? And then you have, you know, nice big, these, they used to use this for glass in ovens. Yes. Um, because it can be relatively transparent when it's a thinner layer, right? And it's fairly heat resistant. As a matter of fact, at one point they used it as insulation in hair dryers. I remember back in the, was it the 70s? Because I was teaching already at that point. Mm -hmm. um, they realized putting asbestos into hair dryers is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. Asbestos is a mineral also, right? Yeah. Um, and in some, some of the manufacturers actually replaced the asbestos with mica because of the heat resistant quality of it. Um, we obviously, mm -hmm. once they developed you know, heat resist or what a glass that had a higher melting point. You yeah. Know, um, that they you know stopped using that for. Yeah. Glass. I think this was yeah. referred to when it was used in those heat applications as isinglass yes. or isinglass. Yeah, isinglass. Yeah. So Eisenglass. if you're going up to New Hampshire near Rochester, you go across the isinglass oh. river. You know, and I haven't oh, looked at that, but I assume they probably had some yeah. quarries where they're actually taking that out of the ground. Um, to use industrially. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. These pieces here were found on Barrel Mountain mm -hmm. in, uh, that's in Alstead, New yeah. Hampshire. Yeah. So we're in yep. southern. Yeah, uh, all three of these are from that area. Southern, yep. southern New Hampshire. Yep, near Keene. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah. let's talk about this rock a little bit. How would you characterize what Too that? Too bad we can't ask the audience what they think. You know, see if yeah, they've been I, listening. Yes, yeah, right. I, I would tell this to my students. So, I, I, so when you're looking at this, since I have to answer your question, I can't put it off. Um, we're looking <laughs> at this, and we're seeing large crystals, particularly large crystals of the mica. Right, yeah. everything's kind of interlocking. Right. Okay. Um, we're not seeing the layers. It's right. not easy, or banding, right, that we see. Yeah. So this is screaming igneous to me, and it's okay. screaming plutonic, oh. right? Okay, so, um, so we're back inside the, the earth, earth, deep okay. inside mm -hmm. the earth. Right, Okay. and this looks like a pegmatite to me. A and, pegmatite. And pegmatite to me, it, what we're looking at is plutonic igneous, but also an area where there's been probably water um, more, oh, we don't think of rocks as being wet, mm -hmm. right? But there's water in the, on mm. the surface and down inside the earth. And what that does is actually, it's a catalyst to get crystals to grow bigger. So a pegmatite, by definition, has larger crystals in it that are interlocking. Um, and there's a lot, there are a lot of pegmatites around here. And if you think about what we talked about with plate tectonics before and the collision, we're typically taking crust that's sitting under the ocean floor or the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. It's pretty wet rock. Sure. And it's going down underneath there and it's carrying not only the rock, but it's carrying the water with the it water. that's going to start heating up and cooking and mm -hmm. getting things changing. And so we see the pegmatites, you know, 
deep formation, but also something else to make those crystals bigger. Because when you look at a typical granite, mm -hmm. um, crystals don't necessarily get as big as these things. Right, right. right. They're um, much smaller. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so both Much of these, smaller. this one may have actually even formed farther down than this, right? In yep. terms of, you know, length of cooling, you would say, oh, this must have taken forever to cool because yeah. of the huge crystals. In this case, it's probably more of a factor that mm -hmm. what was in it to start with, right? And the water would have caused the larger crystals to form. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. um, it's complicated. And this was yeah. one of the really hard things for geologists to figure out, too, because if mm -hmm. this is happening miles down underneath the Earth's surface, yeah. how do you figure that out? Right? Yeah. We haven't been down that far. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's some deep drill holes right. in some areas. I think uh, seven miles yes. is about... Right, uh, right. Uh, yeah, and you're doing one, one hole. That's you right. Know, what are you going to find out in that one particular hole? Right. But they do simulations in laboratory conditions, mm -hmm. um, small scale stuff. All right, yeah. what if we add pressure and things to this? What if we change the heat? What do yeah. we get forming there? Um, so they've got a pretty good idea what's going to happen um, yeah. with depth. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. What yeah. would you say this black? Uh... Oh gosh, <laughs> it's a pyroxene or an amphibole, right? Um, there's some minerals that are really hard to tell apart yeah. because they're very similar in chemistry. They're very similar. You know, you might have slight differences in the angles of the crystals, um, but this would probably be an indication of an amphibole or a pyroxene, uh, which is common okay. in, yeah. along with the feldspars, okay, which are the whitish things here, yes. and there's some quartz in here, um, yeah. along with the, the mica. Yeah. So, so pegmatites, that, I mean, that's the name of our newsletter. Yeah, and that, I'm the editor news, of the newsletter, the so yeah. Oh. Um, and, uh, you know, pegmatites are prized by collectors. They are. Because you, know. you can find some really interesting minerals yeah. that happen when you get the interaction of the water, the different elements in the, that, for your source material. So barrels, um, a lot of the club members are really into collecting barrels. Um, yeah, we know a couple people a like couple that. People like that. Yeah. And I'd love to find some, you know, we had one, our president found that beautiful barrel yeah. up at an old um, crushing plant up in, up in New Hampshire. That's right. Um, yeah, yeah, nice stuff. Um, tourmalines, things like that um, can be found. And you get some of your most interesting minerals are in, in pegmatites and in some metamorphic rocks. Um, because of that cooking. Yeah. Okay. Um, nice. Why don't we show? Um, we're we're um, actually we're Hold just on. about at the end of this, and yeah. we've talked so about just the scratching the surface. We we've covered rocks, so I think can what I, we're going to do. Can I bring up one thing? Absolutely. So I brought along this oh. piece which I think our audience can maybe figure out. This is a piece of. Metamorphic rock. I don't know if it's showing up. Well, they there. should know now. Yeah. It's nice. Right. It's nice. Okay. Right. You um, knew we that. We do. You know, right. there's b distinct banding in here. Not as clear as some of the, this. Right. As but, this. But, okay. But you can um, But see definitely that. has pink, dark areas. Mm -hmm. And this is what's known as the Morton Nice. Uh, a friend of mine collected this in northern Minnesota. This is 3.5 billion years old. All right. You think about that, holding something that's 3.5 billion years old. Right? Um, and it's metamorphic, which means there was something there, a rock there before. Before that, that. was changed to that. Before that. And this is actually, this is, comes from an area of northern Minnesota, which is part of what's called the Canadian Shield. Yeah. Um, and this is the original North American continent. Yeah. 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 The, the stable Creighton? Creighton, yeah. Creighton. Right. Unlike us, nice. who have been beaten by <laughs> um, plate tectonics right. relatively recently, the middle part of the continent hasn't changed much since this rock formed. Yeah. Right. Actually, most of Massachusetts from Little, actually Littleton, which mm -hmm. is right at the end of the Neshoba terrain, um, to the east, was actually a uh, exotic terrain right. that that started off the coast right. of Africa right. and moved right. under plate tectonics right. and right. got welded up to right. 
Morocco what? has, the coast of Morocco has very similar rocks to yes. Eastern Massachusetts. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In many ways. Um, you just need to read the clues. What's the rock telling you? Yeah. I mean, if you pick that up, it's not easy to know. It's 3.5 billion years old, but you do know that it's... Well, you have the location. It? Right. Yeah. You know, if you know the location... You know the location. It tells you. And the geologists have been able to figure out the age of this with radiometric dating and... Um, mm -hmm. Yep. Well, this is great. This is uh, just scratches the surface on rocks and... Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of minerals to talk about. So yeah. I think what we're going to do is um, take a break for a couple minutes and uh, write a script to see what we're talking <laughs> about in the next show. And, uh, and I hope you found this uh, informative. I want to thank Anita for being here. But uh, we'll be back uh, with the next part, which we're going to talk about minerals. See you next time.